Welcome ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being a constant or a returning subscriber in this channel. And there is a WhatsApp chat that have leaked just today. And I'm going to show you that WhatsApp chat. And it is a chat between a Susan Kihika, Ndindi Nyoro, Regedi Geshagwa, and I think in that WhatsApp group, there are majority of the Mount Kenya Uda caucus. Immediately after the Supreme Court passed uh, their verdict, gave their verdict on the closure of the BBI. And in that WhatsApp conversation, we see a team that are worried about how they are going to navigate their political narratives moving forward. I once mentioned, and of course, someone brought uh, this to my attention because someone shared me that screenshot. And we are going to, uh, to fact check and try to go through um, what is there. Then after that, we'll ask ourselves some three fundamental questions. And they're the questions that will explain why this situation is playing out. And as before we get there, there is something I want you to think about. Why do you think that after the BBI, uh, after the Supreme Court verdict was, uh, came out, where were celebrations? The celebrations were only witnessed in Eldoret, where Sudi, uh, Sholei, and the team organized some rally there and they addressed uh, the residents of Eldoret. Unlike last year when the same verdict was passed, we saw different towns, especially from central Kenya, turning out in their numbers to celebrate. But last time, um, on, on Thursday when the verdict came out, we did not see that team coming out to celebrate. In fact, they resorted to go to social media. And if you look at what they are saying in social media, it shows you that there is some, some consistency in what is going on. So let's look at that WhatsApp chat. Now, this is what they are saying. Susan Kehika, my opinion is simple. Let's not celebrate the BBA ruling. And this is for a number of reasons. First of all, I voted for the bill. And secondly, we know about the 54 billion Mount Kenya is being denied. Now, uh, Kichunga is saying, precisely making a lot of noise about the win will have us branded as the enemies of the very region we come from. Then Dito was saying, my guys are working on how we can mitigate the 54 billion loss issue. They hint that the Doyen's 100 billion promise to the hustlers could be a practical starting point. Then the Gade said, let's leave the public celebration to the Doyen and Musali and Weta. Those guys can rub it on the Azimio's face, but for us, let's lay low for now. The last thing we want is to have Wanainchi from Mount Kenya asking about the constituencies lost. Now that is it. So let's just uh, um, let's just face this and ask ourselves a question. Are the concerns being raised here legitimate? It is true that the BBI, one of the beneficiaries, countries and beneficiaries of BBI was Mount Kenya. You remember the one man, one shilling, one vote. So the allocation there was going to increase. And in terms of the additional constituencies, they were the highest beneficiaries. So when the constituencies were added, the capitation per constituency, of course now, you know, they are they're like in Kiambu, there are constituencies that are large, large population. But if they are splitted, the capitation is going to increase. So they were a beneficiary in the BBI. So that is the question I want us to focus. 
and what they're asking legitimate. And they want to know that it is legitimate. If you look at Anne Waihoro Facebook page, she mentioned after the BBI that there were very good fruits in BBI that Central Kenya um, were to get. And for it, so it was time for introspecting. Even Moses Kure was once mentioning that he would implement BBI the way it was because the issue was not on the substance, the issue was on the process. So they are all in argument that something is going on. Now, one way I wanted to fact check whether this is what is running in their minds, I tried to look at how they reacted to the BBI scenario. Kimani Chungwa did not react anywhere. Not in his Facebook page, not in Twitter. Ndindi Nyoro reacted and his call was for the audit of the funds that were used in BBI. Um, Regebe Geshagwa reacted. He was also calling for the funds, audit of the funds that were used in BBI. That was the running call when even Weta and um, and and Mdavadi were making when 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 Weta Mdavadi made public uh, the statement. This informs why, when they were giving the press conference in Lamu on Friday morning, they chose Musalia Mdavadi to react to the BBI issue. In fact, they crucified Mdavadi because immediately Mdavadi spoke about BBI, people now uh, brought to, was, was showing photos of him signing, making, appending his signature to the BBI bill. So this informs why they, William Ruto dodged that aspect. Now, if you look at that photo, <laughs> Dindi Nyori is actually behind. The Central Kenya team were not that much prominent in that press conference. So ladies and gentlemen, it is true that of course, this is a worry to them. Now I want us to ask ourselves some three fundamental questions why this thing is a worry to them and the way forward. But before that, I want to humbly request you kindly subscribe to our channel and also click the notification bell when we publish a video, you shall be notified. I also want to say um, thank you to some people who reach out in the WhatsApp group. Of course, my WhatsApp number is here. Yeah, they buy tea. Yes, I want to. I cannot name them, of course. Buy tea, at least check how are you doing to your family. Yeah, I think some of you have known that I have a soft spot for family. So check out. We are human beings. I want to say thank you very much. I can't respond sometimes to all the messages, but I think I see Nanasema Santin Sana. This work is, there is that bit of that negative energy that some people inject, but at the end of the day, we need move in. Question number one. How will they, and this is what is worrying them, how will they recover what Mount Kenya lost in BBI? Question number two. How will they sustain anti-Raila campaigns in Mount Kenya in respect to BBI? And question number three. Can Raila turn around turn around the fate of BBI into a political tool against them. <laughs> no, not this. I think this is Uhuru. Can Uhuru turn around the BBI fate into a political tool now that it is not actively um, being debated? That is, those are three questions. So how do you think they will recover? This is disturbing them, and that is why in that was chat someone is saying that they talk about, you know, you know, in the BBI there was that word fund. So William Ruto team were trying to figure out that you remember when Ruto used to do the the Trinanda Kutanga 10 100 billion, 80 billion of that. The Tenga Tenga language was to counter um what was in the BBI in terms of maybe the World Fund and how people are going to be empowered. So they are trying to run with that narrative and say they are proposing that then when to address the issue and to make sure that Central Kenya is still locked around BP Ruto, 
they bring back um, that tenga tenga or the allocation of the billions to youths and the youth groups and all that. So question is, is that going to be enough? Will that be convincing enough? The other aspect that we ask ourselves now is about sustaining the anti-Raila campaigns. What um, was used in between, after 2017 to now by this um, the, the, the William Bruto campaign handlers to oust Raila, to term Raila's person in Grata in Mount Kenya, was that first to make BBI be his agenda, then they say that he He's the one who confused the president with the BBI. So he wants to create positions. They want, they want to come up together to create those positions. And so he's not in the interest of the people, but he's about creating positions. So now that that BBI is not there, are they? what are they going to use alternatively to demonize Raila against Uhuru? Because now Uhuru have come out publicly to mention that he's endorsing Raila Odinga. So when BBI could have been there, that, tool, that was their tool. In fact, they demonized Raila the whole year with the whole BBI thing, that it was for the dynasties, it was for Raila Odinga and all that. So their worry now is how they're going to maintain anti-Raila campaigns in central Kenya. Because that brings me to number three. How Uru can turn around the BBI fight? The, the two aspects. The issue of the prime minister was there. But then, now that BBA is not there, and, and of course for the central Kenya, the issue of the prime minister, they didn't welcome it. But there is something that they welcomed there on the additional constituencies because they were standing to benefit. And the president mentioned about this and also the issue of capitation, county capitation, or rather the revenue sharing formula. So, if Uhuru goes and says that, look here, Raila is going to take care of the BBI. The Raila is going to take care of that. Will the Central Kenya trust Uhuru? You know they say. And this is why I feel like the president, and I'm waiting for, the president is supposed to go to Central Kenya. I think uh, we were told, uh, we actually captured on Monday that um, a CS was traveling there in Central Kenya to just oversee this project so that when president makes a round, makes a tour, We'll have something to tell the people. We are trying to figure out how this will work out. But then, lastly, this is a question: Do you think Raila should carry the proceeds of BBI as he moves forward, forward with the campaigns? <laughs> Very legitimate question. Should he carry? Bernard, I want you to answer me. Should he talk about the youth fund? Should he talk about the youth commission? Should he talk about the tax holiday? Should he go to Central Kenya and tell them about the one man, one shilling, one vote? Is it selling? That's the question, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you very much for watching.